Well, welcome, guys. You're at the right place to learn about the pricing mistake of trusting the estimators here in Profit Killing Job Shop Pricing Mistake number four. Now, at the end of this video, we're going to explain what you can do to get away from total dependence upon your estimators and how you can take control of estimating and quoting in your business. I'm Bo Gaines, the Throughput Accounting Guru, and I have with me Brad Salon, the inventor of the Velocity Pricing System. So welcome to our channel here at the Science of Business, where we use the theory of constraints and throughput accounting to help you increase your bottom line. This is the home of the Velocity Pricing System, which you can find at www.velocitypricingsystem.com. So pricing mistake number four, trusting the estimators. Now a prevailing, but false, belief is that time and effort equal accuracy. That's not the case, folks. Uh, your estimators, that being the they there, they treat every quote like it's a one-off. I've never seen a part like this before. This is a unique, different, and special part. And it's like, yeah, but isn't that kind of like the same part we made like two weeks ago? Uh, no, this one's different. Okay. Now, the same person, when quoting the same job on different days, will give you different answers in terms of the price. And Brad, that's an experience that you've had. You know, two different estimators on the same day will give you two different answers. We see this a lot with our clients as a starting point. Just total, it's like a random number generator is what I would call the estimating department. But but for a myriad of reasons, some are emotional. You know, I, I've lost every quote the last two days. So, you know, I, I better lowball this one. Um, I, I'm not I'm not feeling that good today, uh, or I'm feeling great. I mean, all, all those things I, ironically translate into potentially a different estimate. Yep. And, and Brad, it was my experience that our estimators had their own individual heuristics, let's call it for lack of a better description. It would be things like, oh, well, this customer, they don't like material markup. And it's like, how do you know that? Don't ask, I'm the estimator. It's like, okay. Or, you know, it was just all these little wrinkles and rules and elaborations. And it, it just became this magical black box that no one could penetrate was our estimating department. And like it says there, you know, there's an illusion of precision around estimators. And it's assumed that they actually know what they're doing. Uh, the reality is that they don't. And, you know, so we see kind of deep. What's the term for that? Tribal knowledge? I, yeah, I mean, I call it the black box because it, it just is tribal knowledge. It's person dependent. It's not a system. It's not formalized. And it, it's somewhat impenetrable by management. You, you really, in, in this environment, you can't manage estimating because it's totally left up to the person doing the estimate. Um, and, and I remember, you know, Brown, when I was a controller, I'd go ask our estimators, you know, hey, uh, can I get the estimate that you did on this quote? And I, I don't remember what, the, it was like I entered the twilight zone. They would say words, but not give me answers. And after 10 minutes of staring at this person, I said, all right, I'm just not going to get this Excel file, Emma. And I just have to walk off because it, it just wasn't happening. You know, it was complicated. There's a lot of files. Which version do you want? Oh, I can't find it. I'll look for that later. It, it was always this, you know, deflection and uh, distraction game. So, when it comes to estimators, when they're in doubt, well, one of the options they can do is just make it more detailed because the more detail we put in our quotes, the more it looks like we know what we're doing or just blame those idiots, quote unquote, in operations. You know, I quoted it right, Brad, but they, you know, those those idiots in operations, they don't know what they're doing out there. And then also, Brad, too, we find that <laughs> people are using their own custom developed Excel files they're using different Excel files than everybody else in the organization. And they're using Excel files that have just, I mean, they're riddled with errors, just basic math errors, formula errors. I mean, it's just, it's remarkable. I mean, you and I marvel oftentimes at how, you know, it's like, how are these folks still in business doing what they're doing? I mean, that's incredible. You know, it's like just total darts at the board and somehow they've been able to stay alive despite this. So, um, there's that illusion of precision, but it's definitely not the reality. So, liking or loving, uh, this is most folks' uh, perception of the estimators. They're over there making the art of the deal. They're suave. They just got it, you know, they look nice. They got it going on. 
the reality when it comes to your estimating department is this. They're, they're like, what's this say? Huh, I didn't know you could do that. So the reality is that estimators are oftentimes babes and, and total babes when it comes to pricing. They're not as sophisticated as you might think they are. And they use, Brad, you know, to your point, um, it, it's, it's those, uh, those, what did I call them? The heuristics, the person-dependent heuristics and your tribal knowledge term. That's what they're operating with. They're not operating with a sense of purpose. They're not operating, um, it, oftentimes, Brad, in the best interest of the owner or the business. Sometimes they're just operating in their own best interest. So, you well, know, you they, mentioned when they lost two quotes, they'll lowball one. That totally happens. And they're using some version of cost accounting. Uh, yep. Maybe have different cost rates, uh, have different markups on different things, and uh, you know, deal deal with with the engineering time estimate at a level of detail that uh, it is too much. You, you lose perspective. So there's so many sources of error, and, and coming up with an incorrect estimate. Uh, to your point, it's amazing that anybody makes any money any time. Well, Brad, if you don't mark up every cost, and if you don't take it out to four decimal points, how can your quote possibly be correct? <laughs> well, it certainly isn't. <laughs> Speaking to that's definitely the illusion. So if this is what, you know, it, it, this is kind of where we're at. We have this perception. There's this illusion, you know, that the estimating department has around it. And the reality is they're total babes. Well, what's the alternative? How, how should we think about this? Well, the alternative to needing to trust your estimators is to develop a robust pricing system that has the following characteristics. You trust the results it produces. It provides pricing options extremely quickly. And by that, we mean in mere minutes, uh, not hours, days, or weeks sometimes. And guys, if you are uh, at a job shop or a custom manufacturer, you know that it, it's not you know, it's not that uncommon to miss opportunities because you just can't get all the quotes out the door. So that's a reality, unfortunately. Now, this system would also price work appropriately so that you can win jobs and at the same time be profitable. Got to do both. And it would be simple and agreed upon by everyone in pricing. That is that it creates alignment. Like we talked about in our prior pricing mistake number three video about pricing communications. And then finally, it should inspire confidence and discipline in your pricing. So that way, when you develop the price and you send over the RFQ and you've properly communicated it, when your customer comes back and says, oh, this is way too much, you know, show me the call, show me this, show me that, let me see this, I, I can't pay this much, you have the ability to stand your ground and say, well, Mr. Customer, we, uh, we appreciate the fact that you may need to find parts at a lower price point. However, this is the price we need to be at, and it's not part of our practice to reveal our figures and uh, internal propri proprietary knowledge to you. So we're just not going to do that. But we appreciate the opportunity to work with you. And, and the reason you can get to that point is because you develop this confidence and discipline in your pricing to stick to the prices that you need to earn in order to be profitable. And while at the same time knowing that you have enough work that you can win. So Brad, one of the expressions that you and Dr. Lisa have is that it's management's responsibility to develop the systems and processes for the organization. And I think that this slide really speaks to that with regard to pricing, estimating, and quoting. And you know, I would say, Brad, that this, is, this area is kind of like the Wild West, and it, it's been perceived as just too simple. Like, hey, take the time that it takes to do this, multiply it by the cost rate, add a markup, that's a quote. Well, what's so hard about this? And what happens, because there's that perception, this has really been an unmanaged aspect of the organization. And so you find that there's no real systems and processes around estimating and quoting. And yet, when you think about it, Brad, uh, the pricing, uh, you know, let's call that the pricing lever in any business, is the single largest lever. If you get it right, you can change nothing else and become profitable. Or you could have the best operations, the best sales, the best everything. But if you get pricing wrong, you can totally kneecap all those efforts. So I, that's why I think it's critical that you put a system and a process around pricing to create consistent results that you want. Well, guys, this is pricing mistake number four. Um, 
I suspect we'll have more, uh, you know, there, there's a lot more details of this. Gosh, you know, how people develop estimates, the negotiating with yourself, all those kinds of things are all wrapped up in this. So guys, we're going to wrap it up here. But if you want to learn more about how we might be able to help you to substantially increase your net profit, head on over to www.velocitypricingsystem.com. Check us out there and request a strategy session and we can meet and discuss um, if it might be a good fit and if we can help you. But anyway, uh, we'll see you in the next one and we appreciate the time. Thanks.